Hi guys, it's France. Welcome to week 108 of the Journal on Monday series. I'm working in my altered book today and for the first layer I'm mixing up some Finnevar light paste with some copper crackle, uh, which is one of the texture pastes from Finnevar. I want to lighten up my copper crackle. I don't want any big crackles. Um, if, if there are any crackles at all, I want them to be very, very, very thin. Um, so I'm mixing those two up to make my copper crackle lighter. And now I can apply it, as you can see, in a very, very thin layer. Now, as I wanted to do the other side, I realized that my pages weren't glued together yet, so I had to do that first, and to do so I'm using Art Basics Soft Matte Gel. First applying it on one side, and then applying it on the other side to glue it together. To make sure that it stays as flat as possible while I work in my book. Now I know I'm a day late with uh, this week's journal on Monday and that's because yesterday I had another video to share with you. If you haven't been around on my blog I invite you to go and check it out. It's an interview I gave to Connie from Dirty Footprint Studio and it's all about uh, being an artist and why I do these journal on Mondays. And the reactions I received to that interview really really motivated me to uh, sore while doing this journal on Monday taping today. I'm taking some um, film, this is just for my kitchen, to wrap food in and I'm applying modeling paste on top of it. The, again, this is one of the art basics from Finnevar and I'm just um, splattering it around on my spread. I want to create some unidentifiable <laughs> texture doing this and I want to have differences in the dimensions. So I want to have thin um, places where it's really thin and places where it's thicker. So where it's too thick I'm just scraping it back off and putting it back on my film and then dabbing it again on my spread. And now I can dry it. It took quite some time to dry and now I can go back in with the second layer which is Color Bloom ink sprays. I'm using two shades of blue and as usual you'll find a complete list of ingredients um, on my blog. I have to heat set it to help the color stay on the spread as there is um, the metallic um, texture paste underneath. I have to help it a bit to stay on there. So I'm really heating, heat setting it. Taking just a bit of the um, color bloom away on the outside of my spread. I'm doing this with a baby wipe and then drying it. And now I can go back in with my Distress Ink to accentuate those mini tiny little crackles that I have in the copper texture. I want to accentuate the texture a bit more, so I'm taking a fluid acrylic and just going over it with my finger and keeping my finger as flat as possible so that I only colorize the, the highest part of the texture paste. And then again heat setting it. Adding some more distress ink. 
And then I'm going in with another color of the uh, fluid acrylic, and this is the Quinacridone Nickel as a Gold. And I'm using a baby wipe to make sure that my layer of this color is really, really thin. It's just to add, to add some highlights, not to really add color to it. And then again, I'm going back in with the Distress Ink. Again, to accentuate all the texture that I have on my spread. This is an old uh, moleskin journal, and as you can see, I'm losing my ring. I'm very proud to say that I lost that much weight that I can't keep my ring on my finger anymore. So I added some Distress Ink to this piece of paper and then some water and I really want to make it look like it's been around for ages. This is one of my uh, Stampotique stamps. This is the barcode, which I'm stamping using archival ink on my piece of paper. And I also have two barcode texts from which the words fit exactly in that barcode and I'm using a stamp positioner to see where I have to stamp that particular word that I want to use. And as you can see, I don't always clean my stamp positioner. I clean it once in a while when there's just too much on it and I don't see what I'm doing anymore. If you'd like to know more about how to use that kind of stamp positioner, I made a tutorial about it so you can find it on my uh, YouTube channel. And now I have the exact word that I wanted to use there where I wanted to have it. Resizing my piece of paper, just trimming it very quickly and just a bit too quickly. Some more Distress Ink. Some more water. And the funny thing is when you spray water on top of archival ink, it makes the archival ink pop on top of your paper. It's a very fun uh, reaction and look, it looks really cool. And then I'm applying some double-sided tape so that I can stick it to that piece of cambric that you can see on the left, which is a piece of colorized uh, fabric. Now I very often get requests about the cambric. You can uh, get it at the pharmacy and that's what it's called, cambric. It's written in the list of ingredients if you want to have the exact um, writing of the, the name. So I'm mixing up some Sennelier inks with water so that I can colorize that strip of plaster that I got out. I'm checking the color that I mixed and it's not dark enough, so I'm adding some more of the darkest um, Sennelier ink. And now I can start colorizing my strip if my spray bottle will work. It's not dark enough, so I'm going back in with some color bloom and some more of my mixture. I'm distressing the edges using flat nose pliers. And now I can start assembling things. Now my page was quite sticky because of the color bloom, so I'm going over it with baby uh, powder. And it's fun to work with baby, baby powder in your book because it makes your book smell good. <laughs> and taking the excess off just with a, a piece of dry cloth.
I need to reinforce my piece of paper because it's such thin paper that the texture of uh, the plastic strip underneath is making it all wobbly. So I'm giving it a support of a piece of cardstock. Just gluing things together using uh, Art Basic Soft Matte Gel that I uh, put in a precision bottle. And as you can see, I have a new precision bottle. This is my um, treasure box of fabric leftovers and stuff. So this is another piece of cambric, a bigger one, that I want to add underneath um, the pieces that, that I already selected. And as I have a lot of ink on my table, I'm taking a second piece of cambric that I'm colorizing at the same time. Again, some color bloom to add some darker accents. And now I can um, assemble again. And as you can see, I picked out a couple of uh, metallic embellishments that I want to add, as well as a turquoise piece of uh, cambric. That it was, it was just laying around in my treasure box of fabrics. And I'm doing the exact same thing as I did earlier on. I'm using a piece of cardstock to reinforce everything and to stick everything together. Because I want to run a couple of things through my sewing machine and to do so I have to make sure that everything will stay together in place. So again I prepared a smaller piece of uh, plaster strip and a smaller piece of cambric. And now I can start sewing. So once I'm done, I'm just pulling the, the thread from the back to the front and making a little knot so that everything stays in place. And now I can start putting everything in place and glue it or attach it in another way. Again, some soft matte gel. And as you can see, it's really perfect to put all these elements together. This piece of metal that I want to add doesn't have a hole in the middle to place a bread, so I'm just making one using my big bite. So yes, a big bite can go through metal, as long as the metal isn't too thick, of course. Those breads on the other side will make a fun texture to start with when I will work on that side of the paper. I changed my mind and decided to add that butterfly that has, of course, a lot of meaning for me as it's my name. Um, I'm just changing the bread that I already had in place, but the cambric was giving me some resistance, so I had to make clear who was in charge. <laughs> and that's it. Going back in with touches of soft matte gel because I want to add some glitter 
just some tiny touches and I'm mixing up several colors. I'm mixing up um, two shades of blue and one shade of uh, copper and I'm taking the excess off. And as you can see, I haven't finished the cover of my book yet. That will be for later on. Adding some shadow stamping just on my uh, piece of paper, very lightly, not too much. And then adding my date stamp just because I don't know what to do next, but I know that I still have to do something. It's not done yet. So first I'm going back in with some heavy gesso to add sweaters, the black one first. And then I'm doing the same with the white gesso. And I'm making smaller splatters with the white than with the black. And as I still have that white gesso, I'm adding some uh, light touches here and there on the spread. I decided it needed some more of the glitter. <laughs> Who would have thought that I would become a glitter girl? That must be Finovar's influence. And I love it for I love her for that. Um, that's it for today. Don't forget to hit Oh no, it's not that it that's it for today. I also added some um, archival ink over a dilution stencil. And that's it for today. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like today's spread. Don't forget to check out the interview on my blog. The link is in the description of this video. Have a great week and see you back next time. Ta-da!